Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. There's been a lot of news coming out this week about Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition, and I thought it might be nice to put it all together into one video of everything we know so far. To start with, there was a trailer released at Gamescom showing off a lot of footage. We get some nice shots of the home cities, for example, and the graphics immediately look way better to me. Age of Empires 3 did have the highest starting point for the graphics compared to 1 and 2, so I wasn't sure how noticeable the improvements would be. But there's a noticeable improvement in the detail of the textures as well as the lighting and shadows. They give us a few side-by-side -side comparisons, one of a cutscene with a before and after, as well as a bit of gameplay from the first campaign mission. Again, the textures and lighting are way better and even the ground has so much more detail. Like Age of Empires 2, it has an optional enhanced graphics pack and is designed for 4K. Of course, that comes with the trade-off of some beefier system requirements. Not only does it recommend double the RAM of H2 Definitive Edition, but the minimum storage it says is a whopping 42 gigabytes compared to AOE2DE's 30. Based on the size of my H2 folders with and without the optional enhanced graphics, I think that's probably with everything altogether. But even looking at the other requirements, it seems like H3 is going to be more demanding than H2. If you have an older computer or laptop, you might want to take a look at how the requirements compare to your setup. The official Age of Empires Twitter also released a few screenshots showing the contrast between the regular AoE 3 and Definitive Edition unit models. Zooming in this much shows how blocky the original models really were. I think the models look great and everything has been remade faithfully to the original units, so they should be easy to recognize for veteran players. Hopefully the option's there to zoom in enough to actually get some of that detail. In addition to the new graphics and overhauled sound effects and music, there are two new civilizations, bringing the total now to 16. The first is the Inca, and we get a couple of glances at their buildings during the trailer. Every civilization in Age of Empires 3, of course, has a unique architecture set. We also get to see some of their units in action. For example, we see Incas have a maceman line, and a bit later we get a look at some of their archers, which I think have a cool and distinctive look, though I'm not sure why their arrows are green and flaming. It's almost a copper flame sort of look. I like all of the attention to historical details as well. In a screenshot on Steam, we can see their architecture up close and their famous interlocking stonework. The Inca were truly masters of Tetris hundreds of years before its invention. The other new civilization is the Swedes, which is actually the first time they've been included in an Age of Empires game. We get a couple of glimpses at both their architecture and some of their units. It seems like Forgotten Empires was involved a lot more than I thought, and Cision spoke in an interview about the rationale behind both of the new civilizations and why they were included. I never heard of Scandinavian sawed roofs before, but apparently they were a thing and are represented in the game. Another big change is they've added a couple of new game modes. The first is historical battles, which seems to be included instead of a new campaign. I'm picturing something like the Battles of the Conquerors in Age 2 as a series of standalone missions, but they haven't really given any details on it. They're also continuing the Art of War series. Now, Art of War has been really popular in Age of Empires 2 and aims to teach a lot of the basics for multiplayer. Stuff beyond just how to move your units and more about how to play the multiplayer meta, like what units counter others, how to boom your economy, and more advanced topics like that for people who want to start playing online. We also get a few shots of the updated UI, which looks much cleaner to me. Instead of an intrusive bar running across the bottom, the UI appears and disappears depending on whether something is selected, which takes away a bit of that clutter. The information about resources, idle villagers, and all that is now much more in line with Age 2 in the top left corner with the minimap in the bottom right. That might be disorienting for Age 3 players at first, but I think standardizing that type of thing makes it a lot easier to switch between games in the franchise. Another notable change is to the Native American civilizations. To make things more historically accurate, they've swapped coin and gold for Native American civilizations with fur trading. They didn't elaborate on exactly how that mechanic is going to work, but it's going to be a bit of a shakeup for the Iroquois and Sioux economies. Overall, it's looking really good to me, and I was impressed with all the new features and especially how the game looks. It's available for pre-order now on Steam and Windows Store for $20 US, though you get a 25% discount if you own either the complete AoE 3 collection and get that bundle, or have the previous two definitive editions and complete your definitive edition bundle. It's nice that they're thinking of specifically H3 fans, as well as the people who have just jumped into the franchise with the definitive editions. To be honest, I don't see any real incentive to pre-order unless you're just 100% sure you want to get the game. Like AoE 2 DE, it'll include all previous expansions and will allow for crossplay with Windows Store and Steam users. The release date is set for Thursday, October 15th, so just under 7 weeks away. Given the Art of War tutorials and hype around its release, I think it could actually give a nice revival to the AoE 3 community. I'm sure I'm not the only AoE 2 player thinking that it looks better than ever. 
That's all for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.